Hi y'all, Matthew here with Grafted Branch Homestead. Welcome to our quail project here as we uh, strive for more self-sufficiency and sustainability as well as quality good food that we're putting into ourselves and animals that are well cared for. So uh, today we are going to be releasing the quail outside into the hutch. It is cold, we've been acclimating them, they're big, it is time to go. So join us as we get the uh, hutch finished up all the way and get the quail out there. So we're going to build a couple sandboxes to go in the hutches. This is something I've seen uh, what a whole bunch of quail people do. Um, hopefully this will do a couple things. It'll allow them to take their sand baths or dust baths. They can eat some of it as grit. Um, also, I'm hoping what it'll do is it's been uh, below freezing out here at night. And it will be is the sand I'm hoping will help retain some of the birds heat as they sit on it. This is the largest box. The others aren't quite this big. We're going to go ahead and uh, finish this one up, fill it with sand, get them in the hutch. Pretty right, awesome. I just used this uh, one by three on the sides. The one by four looks a little too high. I think this will be good. We'll fill this up with the sand. And the sand I'm using is uh, you just got it at Home Depot, there's play sand, so that will be good. Alright, so this is the hutch I built. Um, I'm building. <laughs> I still have to put the sandboxes in and hang one of the doors, um, but it's inside here. There is not a whole lot of room, pretty much just enough room to open up the doors. Um, all right, so excuse some of the mess as I'm finishing up in here. But this is going to be the box that uh, this sandbox is built for. If you ever visit New Mexico, uh, note dress in layers. <laughs> it's, uh, it's starting to heat up here now in the day, and so we should take off a couple layers before we go grab them. Alright, there's kind of small space in here, so we'll see. Right. So this sandbox. I'll go right in here. Just like that. And we'll fill up our second box of sand. Originally I was going to use this for breeding sets as well. However, I'm not going to be breeding throughout the winter um, barred unless, you know, some dramatic need to, uh, which could happen. Um, but my goal right now is to get my, my quail set, uh, flocks set up and going so that way in the spring I can continue to hatch them out. And at that time I'll build a, a little breeding hutch and have a bigger area in here. That is the plan for now at least. All right, so for the bedding I'm gonna use on these little trays, um, I've decided to go with this horse and small animal, the stall pellets. Um, thanks to some great advice by some amazing quail people. Thank you guys. Um, so we're gonna use those. They're supposed to be a little more absorbent and help a little bit better. There we go. So we're gonna use those on these trays here. My plan originally, before I knew I was going to have so many quail, um, was just to do this top section and allow everything to fall through. Um, I don't have a lot of room to work with the quail right now, so I did need to add these two bottom sections um, for the male. Anyways, that's how it turned out. Awesome. 
cool. All right, so we're ready to move some of the birds out. What I wanna do here is separate as best I can the males from the females. A lot of them I'm not gonna be able to do that. I know the white ones and, and some of the uh, grays in different colors. I'm not gonna be able to feather sex or I don't know how. So I'll have to wait till they're about eight weeks old. So in a month where I can vent sex them. Um, so what I'm gonna do is to the best of my abilities, feather sex some and I'll show you how I'm doing that. And pick out some of the roosters or pick out all the roosters that I can as well as any I think maybe roosters. That bottom rooster cage can hold about 10 to 12 birds. If there's a few more, that's okay, because at about um, eight to 10 weeks, I'm gonna be calling about half of the roosters. Um, so I'm not as worried about that. What I'm more worried about is I don't want to accidentally put one female in there with 11 males and have her beat up or um, when they're outside, so if they start crowing or laying eggs, obviously I know it's a rooster or a hen. Um, but for now, what I'm going to do is feather sex the ones I know how. And what I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. So I know on these ones here, this one for example, males seem to be a lot feistier. Also, their chests uh, get this rust color. And they'll start to get more of a solid, uh, like rust or orange on them. So I believe this is a rooster from what I understand. So we'll put him down in there. Now this one I do not know. Um, I think this is a tuxedo. I could be wrong. I need to. I need to really look into that now that I have some more time. But I, I can't feather sex this one, or I don't know how. Now this one, see how it has more of these dots? Doesn't really have that rust color. Just more of this speckled pattern. I think this is a female or a hen. And so. I may end up just having to select some, and if they end up being females, move them. So what I'm probably gonna have to do then is I'll, I think this one over here is a rooster, looks like. Because I do not know and I need six more birds is I'm just gonna move all the white ones in there. And we'll certainly, we'll probably have hens in there, so I'm gonna have to run sex and separate them out better as we go. I'm not putting them in a grow out pen, they're going right into their hutch, being I don't have any other birds in there, they're the first set, so I don't see uh, why I would need a grow out pen first. Alright, so we have 12 of them that I, I know for sure, <laughs> about half of them are roosters, the other ones I'm not sure, um, so we'll separate as best as we can, but we'll take these 12 birds out to the hutch. All right, so we got the 12 possible roosters. I'm gonna shut this door so they don't escape. My family hopefully is gonna be watching from the other side. Jen is right over there. And this will start the beginning of our quail journey here. That's all of them males into the cage here and so they're hanging out in there it might be a little that's about the maximum amount of birds i can have in there um, but we'll be calling in about four weeks so those are the ones i believe are males the kids have not come outside but jen is over there say hi <laughs> <laughs> is he scaring them <laughs> Okay, well let me get the other birds and we'll put them in. Alright, so we got the rest of the shire flock. There's 24 birds in here that are either hens or I'm not sure and we'll have to vent sex later. Keith is jumping on the trampoline. We got the mama over here recording. <laughs> Solo down there sniffing. And so the 24 are going to go up in this top part. Now this top part is twice the size as the bottom part that the male are in. Um, so hopefully that will do. Right now it's about, oh, probably 60 degrees out here. Tonight it will be about 30. So I've been uh, letting them acclimate in the room with the window open. It does not drop down below about 45 in that room though. 
This is the night when it drops below freezing. Uh, it'll be a good test. Hopefully I don't lose the flock, but from what I understand, they can be in very cold temperatures, much colder than that, um, as long as they can get out of the elements. All these ones that are going in here, I believe they're hens. They have just speckles, none of that rust color on their chest. Um, a lot of them I know I cannot feather sex that way though. So they, uh, they may end up being roosters and I'll have to watch for that either vent sex or you know if they start crowing. Um, from what I noticed though, the hens seem to be a lot calmer and a little bit smaller. I could be wrong with that, but that's from what I noticed. These cages are at the max capacity. What I used was uh, Zach's uh, measurements over at my Shire Farms, uh, doing three to three and a half birds per square foot. So for the square footage, these are they are maxed out on the amount of birds that I can be in here. I mean, I might be able to put one more in here. Um, so I will need to call come four or five weeks. So we, we truly did do a, a good hatching batch here. So we'll open it before they hop out. They're in there enjoying the dust bath, bunch of them. And the other half are over here enjoying some sun. So I'll get the food put in this one before we bring the game birds into the other side. All right, so no coming in here. And there they are, hanging out in the sun. What are you guys doing over there? All right. I'm gonna give the Shire flock top uh, hens here their food and water. So we're just gonna give them water. Um, I'm not putting in the automatic watering system yet. That'll have to be in spring. It is too cold right now, and we're gonna need to be bringing out water every morning anyways. So that build is to come. I will be doing some no mess quail feeders um, really soon here. like the birds really enjoy their sand baths so I'm guessing that is a plus most of them are all up in there oh, move your toes out there they are loving that huh what what's that YouTube family what's all this cool stuff up here hey I'm glad you asked all right so this quail hutch I did run power and lights over from the chicken coop, which has quite a bit of solar. Uh, but we're gonna put this quail hutch on its own solar system uh, for their lights, and I wanted to show that. So in a video to come, um, if you wanna see that, go ahead and comment below, and I'll do a video on setting up this really cheap, really easy to do solar system with a timer so that I can get these quail their 14 plus hours of light they need. Okay, so this next set of roosters was from the game bird flock. They're uh, jumbos, they were jumbo browns and whites from the JMF line from Southwest Game Birds. Um, they were really easy to pick out the males on the brown ones. Um, they're pretty big and pronounced and, and very, uh, I'll show you uh, when I pick one up, but very rust on them. So I pulled 12 out right away. Um, I think there's probably a lot more than 12 in there. From the brown, what I saw, there was 12. Um, there's also a lot of the jumbo whites though, and I'm gonna have to wait to vent sex those. So um, I'll most certainly be calling from the, the game bird flock, um, but that's good. That's what I want because they're jumbos. Um, they're the ones I really wanna call for meat. Um, so we're probably gonna be cutting these down in about half. Okay, yeah, so see these the same. I don't know how well it's gonna show up or he's gonna let me hold them, <laughs> but they have that real rust. Uh, solid rust color, and they're very tight.
now I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of the game bird in the um, game bird hen side. Now most of these, I know some of them are probably hens. Um, most of them are just the jumbo white. And uh, so I know some of these are the hens. Most of them are the jumbo white that I just can't sex yet um, until I can do that, uh, until I can bent sex them. Alright, so I've been throwing out some general numbers, but our final numbers is um, we ended up, I have 24 birds up top here in the Shire Flock uh, hens area, and then we have 12 uh, down in the rooster area, so we have 36 uh, of the Shire birds. So the final numbers on the game birds actually have 18 up here and 12 down here, so we ended up with 30, 37. So total numbers on the flock then would be uh, 66 birds. Um, not 72. We did lose a few. Um, we lost one of the big ones a few days ago um, to just uh, to some violence and then we had lost one baby right away. We had lost one to um, some malfunction. Mal Quail are awesome! Alright, so we got all the birds out here. They're happy. They're in their hutch. Um, each hutch is a little bit different and has some different aspects to it such as a plastic um, sand tray versus a wood one. They're different sizes, have a little bit different bottoms um, in what sizes the net, uh, the mesh is and whatnot. Anyways, each cage is unique and that is done on purpose. That way I can gather some different information from each one and see how they do. I'll be watching them closely um, so that way I can separate male and female and just see how they're doing out here in the cold. I want to make sure these are always locked like that there. However, they are enclosed in the inside here for the most part. This is open, um, but I'm going to be enclosing that now. Uh, cool. So this is the end of this adventure, but not certainly not the end of our Quaternix quail adventure. Um, next videos to come out is going to be the uh, no mess quail feeder, the automatic quail water. Um, I'm going to do a video here uh, really soon, maybe tonight, on how quail do with the cold um, and winterizing and, and things that need to be done as I gain a little experience there. We also, if you guys like and want to comment, I'll have that solar video on the lighting setup for the quail out here, as well as anything anyone else wants to see specifically, just leave in the comments. Um, I appreciate anyone that's watched these videos definitely and stuck through. I think I'm at 80 subscribers now. Um, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe, hit that bell and turn it to all. Um, it definitely helps me out. My goal right now, well my goal of course is to um, spread self-sufficiency and some knowledge or some help hopefully to as many people as possible as I think that is extremely important right now. Um, uh, my short term goal is to get 100 subscribers so I know I'm getting some info out there to at least 100 people so if you're not subscribed go and do so. If you are, thank you so much. It means the world to me. So until next time, you guys have a good one. Stay strong. So this one right here, can you see him? He just crowed. I don't know if you heard him. So he's going to go down with the uh, rooster spot. Let's see if I can get him crowing again. Pretty sure it was that one, hopefully. <laughs> Make sure we're all locked up, awesome. It is about 10.30 at night, not too, too late. We're gonna come check on the quail. The light has kicked off out here. Let's see, temperature is reading about 43 degrees. 
So it'll drop about another 10. And they are all just sitting in there. You know, looking about as happy as could be. Yeah, so it's pretty good. So, what, uh, so I think they're going to be okay out here, even though it is going to be cold. Um, the chickens seem to do just fine too. That's always a worry of mine as to uh, whether they will get cold or not. Um, but feathers are amazing insulators. The chickens seem to do better with the cold than they do the heat. And I think the quail probably will as well. So it is too cold for me though. I'm going in.